Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good evening. This is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. It is the 27th of January, the year of our Lord, 2021. It is Wednesday night. And tonight, our psalm is the 22nd Psalm. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you far off from saving me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. You are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued, in you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouth they make mouths at me, they wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him, let him rescue him, for he delights in him. You are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you in my, at my mother's breast. On you I cast my, on you was I cast from birth, and from my mother's womb. You have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Asham surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravaging and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me on the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircle me, they have pierced my hands and feet. I count all my bones, they stare and gloat over me, they divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild Oxen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening, Lord Jesus, Lamb of the Father's own choosing, who offered yourself a bloody sacrifice for our sins on the place of skulls. Receive our thanks for your love beyond measure. Let your wounds be the solace of our hearts and your merits the ornaments of our souls in life and death, that with your perfect saints on high we may forever sing your praise. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And tonight we begin St. John's third chapter. 
verse 1 through 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. So far the text. So, one of the ruling Pharisees, that means he was part of the council. He was part of the Sanhedrin. And so he shows up at night. Now, the question is, number one, he's part of that ruling class. He is a teacher. His title would be rabbi as well as Pharisee. And always in the past, the Pharisees were always looking to discredit those people proclaiming something different than what they taught. Now we remember back with John, when John was baptizing, it was the Pharisees said, by whose authority do you baptize? It was also the scribes and the Pharisees both who approached John and said, so who are you? Are you the one? Are you the Messiah? And John, of course, says no. And then as he's baptizing, of course, that's when they question him. Now John is baptizing for the forgiveness of sins, and this gets right back to that. It points backwards to that same text. What John was doing, John said, listen, somebody's going to come after me that will not only baptize, but he'll baptize with fire. He will be the, the completeness of baptism. Now we know that John baptized Jesus, and he said, you'll know it by this sign that the Holy Spirit and the Father will all be present. There will be a sign, you will know the one. And he knew that this was the one. So Jesus' baptism empowers baptism. Now Jesus starts to talk about this baptism unless one be born again. Make no mistake about it, this is baptismal language. And so, it's interesting though, how does all this fit together? What is Jesus' baptism? What's the purpose of it? Well, we know baptism as a sacrament. A sacrament is something that, one, is a physical element, two, is the Word of God which conveys a promise, in this case the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. Deliverance from sin. It is through baptism, through water, that one becomes connected to God and therefore delivered from bondage to sin. Now it's interesting because this is not a new concept to the Jewish people. If we take a look at Exodus, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 22. Now this is the Exodus. This is the account of the Exodus. Then say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son, and I told you, let my son go so he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go, so I will kill your firstborn son. So here is through water, through the walking through the Red Sea, Israel is delivered from bondage. Israel is set free through the water. Jesus now takes that, that water, a common element, combines his word to it, and sets us free from sin, from bondage. And so this idea of being set free by water is not new. And so Jesus, of course, is telling Nicodemus who happens to be a member of the Sanhedrin, who comes to him at night, probably out of fear of being known as someone approaching Jesus, and he says, Rabbi, he calls him a teacher. Now, that term Rabbi at least puts him on equal ground. A Pharisee would be a Rabbi. They would be a teacher as well. So is he treating him as an equal, if not a superior? He is definitely not saying anything negative to him. And so he says, Rabbi, we know you have come from God. Well, I doubt that they've discussed this, but maybe there's been a conversation going on among some of the Pharisees that no one could be doing these miracles unless he was from God. And he goes on to say, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you do 
if God were not with them. So probably what Nicodemus thinks is Jesus, maybe not the Messiah, but he is a prophet. He's doing great signs. Elijah did great signs. So there, there were been, Moses did great signs. There have been other prophets that did great signs. But remember that, that Israel, that God had been quiet through that intertestamental period, that period between the Old Testament and the New Testament, God had remained silent. There had been no great prophets until John showed up. And now all of a sudden Jesus is here. They had been waiting for the words that would allow them to repent and be returned to God and return to their own kingdom and kick the Romans out and have their own kingdom once again and maybe a kingdom on earth. So probably he was thinking, well, at best this is a prophet that will restore. Now maybe he thought it was the Messiah. We don't know for sure. And he's rarely mentioned. I mean, he's mentioned again in verse 5 and then a little bit later. But the point is, is Nicodemus is questioning. He says, he says so, uh, in reply, Jesus declared, I will tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. So right there we have the reference that takes us back to this release from bondage that occurred in Exodus, now is occurring here. Jesus says, you want to be released? You must be born again. How can one be born again? You see, that release in the Old Testament was for the Israelites. It was for Israel. It was the release from bondage for them. But this new release through Jesus in the water is for all people. What occurs is, is for the Jewish people, what happens is if they are baptized, they are baptized into Jesus. They are baptized into God. And it's God that has delivered them. They become the new Christians. And for the Gentiles who get baptized, they are baptized into the kingdom of Israel. And so... Uh, it is rather interesting, they're fulfilled 100%, just like the Jewish people are when they're baptized. They become fulfilled Jews. And they become part of the new Israel. If you're a Gentile, you become likewise a fulfilled Jew. You're, you're a new person. No one can see the kingdom. Now notice that kingdom of God. Israel was being released so that they could go to the new kingdom of God, free from Pharaoh, free from Egypt. We are released so that we might go to the kingdom of God, which is found in Christ Jesus, the new kingdom. And so, in Christ, the new church and a new kingdom. The kingdom is in Christ. And the temple, well, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit, but you are part of the church of Christ, with part of the body of Christ, Him being the head. And so, we see this, this bookend, Old Testament released through the water, New Testament released through the water, Old Testament moving into the kingdom, New Testament in the kingdom, in Christ. And so that word kingdom doesn't get used very often in, in John's Gospel. But it's an important phrase. Jesus, of course, is asked by Pharaoh, he says, so are you a king or not? He says, I, I tell you the truth. I am a king, but my kingdom is not of this world. And so... Jesus, yes, is a king. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And his kingdom is a heavenly kingdom, which you already are part of. It's just not fully realized because our heads might be in the heavens, but our feet are still here on earth. And so we walk in this kind of dichotomy in the world, but not of the world. And so we're in the church, and we have not yet seen the fullness of that church, the fullness of Christ's glory, but we shall because that is what's been promised to us. We pray that Nicodemus goes a little bit farther and discovers the fullness of Jesus. But then we pray that for ourselves too, that we might know the fullness that is only to be found in him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, but even more that you combined your word with water, your word with bread and wine, that we who are slow and feeble-minded may Taste and see that the Lord is good, that we might know it completely by you touching us with a physical thing as well as with the spiritual thing. Continue to bless us with your word, guide us in your word, fill us with your truth, that we may become vessels overpouring the truth of Christ into the world. 
Grant us such boldness. Grant us peace. And watch over our nation and all our members therein. And grant us peace that allows your word to go forth, that people may hear and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Have a blessed night in the Lord.